really it's, uh, it's, it's our last screening here, uh, but it's the most uh, excited one for me because of this day and uh, last night was the Memorial Day, it's always together. And last week it was the Holocaust Day. It's, it's a tough, tough week for us Israelis and we spent it all this week here. Um, I just, I, I really would, would like you to ask questions and Guy and you, we can answer. I just want to say three quick short points to open the discussion. Uh, this is a story, who tells our story, that, that's what I meant to do. It's, it, it's about the in, internal, it's called Room 514, internal interrogation. It's about the interrogation of the Israeli society. Um, we have good and bad, wrong and right, left and uh, left and right, and we have black and white, and we have all those voices you can hear inside our society. And it's our great opportunity to tell this story all over the world. The, the film was in Rotterdam Film Festival, and now here, and I is going to go to Cannes Festival and then to many other festivals around the world and then it will distribute, I have this, we already have distribution in France and Europe and possibly in the States. And it's, it's important that more and more people will hear this story. And the second, the second point is about, uh, it, it's about, it's a woman's story, like I told you before, through the woman's eyes, because when I, I watch the Israeli films for the last, the great Israeli films the last 10 years, really great films like Or, Ajami, Valsing Bashir, Beaufort, Lebanon, um, Broken Wings, Band Visit, I could see that the image of the woman, I didn't like the image because or oh, she's a prostitute, or oh, she had problems, or oh, she's a second-hand woman, or oh, she doesn't exist at all. In, if, in a lot of film. And I say, what's going on? This is not reality in Israel. We have uh, F-16 pilots, we have uh, the, the head of the Supreme Israeli court is a woman, an F-16 pilot, a female pilot, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. So I must tell the true story that I can, I can see in 2010, 11, 12, those years in Israel. And the last point is about being uh, that Anna is a Russian from Russia origin. I was looking for a Russian uh, actress for a long time because I wanted to portray this picture that the outsider, like the Russian immigrate, immigration, immigrator, is now becoming, she's becoming now the authority, the, the, the main, the main uh, in the main position, in the superior position. And the guy who is a uh, salt of the of the earth, salt of the earth, like he's, you know, maybe, and now he is the outsider. And I switched it, like you can see. And I think some, suddenly he asked, her, "Are you the army?" I, mean, I can't understand it. Yes, you said, "I'm the army," and the army is investigating me. Investigating. So those are the three points, and I had the great opportunity to work with actors like Guy, and uh, and. Uh, Asya, her name, and uh, Udi, and um, because they are so dedicated, they are so, they're special actors. Uh, you can find in Israel many actors, but, but those actors um, symbolize, well, the, first of all, they fit um, very realistic films like that. But also, I can trust them, and I could, they, 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 were, they were with me all over the way, and we had a tough, tough six months. Uh, during rehearsing the film and preparing it, and we shoot it, it's good that you are sitting, we shoot it in four days. Uh, average time in Israel is uh, four weeks, 40 days, in the States it's uh, 20, it's two months, uh, four days, it's like we, we did it, we, we, we were very ready for it, and then boom, we shoot it. Um, uh, so okay, so I would like to hear you. It's, it's, it's really great opportunity. Yes. Was this based on an actual event that occurred in Israel? You know, this is our life. 
My father have gone through it, I've gone through it, Guy have gone through it. Probably our children, we used to say, we hope that our children will not go through it. Well, our kids going to go through it. And this is life in Israel. You don't have to, to base on real story. But on 2010 and 11, there were few cases that uh, some sergeant uh, reported his commander, and there's another case that the, that the commander was uh, it was innocent. So you see, it's like our life um, mixed with those events, like every day. And you know, the, the day we flew out here, there was something like this in Israel. Some officer hit some uh, uh, volunteer from Sweden, I don't know, in the face with the, with the butt of the gun. It was big balaganing with it uh, all over the world. So. in the back? Yeah. Okay. Yes or no? No. No. So the first part of the question is um, what responsibility do, does the older generation have to the, to the younger generation that are um, in positions of power where they, and they seem so rigid and they have to uh, enforce these regulations? And then the other question is related to people in Israeli culture who are, um, who maybe don't pay taxes and are not. Uh, Serving in the military, but um, and sort of are exempt from from this. Your film you have watched is tragedy, because it's like it's like like there is some curse on Israel running after the, our tail, and somebody in Rotterdam said, "What is your solution to the?" <laughs> oh, okay, I would have been here if I had the solution. But, <laughs> but, but my duty is to tell the story, to open, to open up, to, to discuss about it, and to bring those, this young generation to think about it. And you know, you can think about 20 years, 24 years old kids, what young people in the States, in New York, what our life are looking like, and you can see those people, she's 20 years old, and this is the thing she has to deal every day, what most, many times. And so, that's we are here now today watching this film. It's our mission to to make things, to talk about things, and to let the process work. And about those people, guy will add his, his things but to about those people who don't don't pay taxes or you know if I don't know who you mean, but maybe you, what I tell about the Orthodox people or the Arab people, we are citizens of Israel. Uh, well, I, I, I think that every filmmaker should make a film about the stuff or the thing that he knows well and he's related to. Like my friend Joseph Sida, he's doing films about his war 
and, uh, and what you know, other Israelis, uh, filmmakers, uh, every, who succeed. You know, you, it's the only way you can succeed to, to tell your, your individual story. So I hope my next film will also deal with, you know, the, the things that I can, I can tell about, and it's very important for me to tell them right now. Guys. I want to talk about uh, the age of the characters, where the characters are all 18, 19, and 20, you know? And the, the commander here, who Udi Delsi brilliantly portrays, is 23. Yeah, he has his birthday coming out every four. And um, by the way, the, 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 all of us, the, the actors, because we're also Israeli uh, citizens, we've all been in the army, and we all really went through that process. And we all, uh, the male characters, were all all the actors have been in uh, special units. Udi Persi and Ohad Hol, and uh, you might have seen how, how we deal with the weapons. So you see, we've all been there. I've uh, personally been uh, four years in the military. Um, Ohad Hol has been as well four years. And um, I, can t I can share this, that when you join the army at 18 in Israel, you, you are young, but it's after you've been raised up in Israel, which is kind of a microwave. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you kind of, you get yourself ready already when you're 15, 16, you try to start training mentally and physically. And then when you get to that point in life, you, I think uh, life has, got you ready and for that, uh, those con confrontations and those conflicts. And then we're those young supermans in, uh, in Israel, and we have to do these uh, situations, we have to deal with those conflicts. And another thing I, I, I felt now, this is the second time I've seen the film, is that um, in the situation that uh, Mr. Barziv, my friend and mentor, they wrote about is um, I've been in many of those situations in Gaza and the West Bank and in Lebanon and I, I have to tell you that um, in, when you are in such a situation especially when you're so young you you don't think about uh, morals or the uh, uh, Geneva law you know or uh, you, you, you just want one thing, and that's uh, just to get to a home alive. And so actually, when now seeing this, I, I would do exactly like uh, the commander did here in life. That's what I would do uh, all the way. And I think that uh, kind of conflict is part of being Israeli. On the one hand, we want peace, and we want to be with the people, and on the other hand, we just want to be safe. You know? yeah. yeah. I just want, want to add something that the big, the big conflict in Israel is between our security needs and our uh, we, and our moral and moral values that we want to keep. And this is the conflict. That just, just more questions. Uh, the question is, in, if this were to happen in real life, would, would a situation like this be swept under the rug and sort of handled quietly, or would it be? Would there be trials? Would there be an investigation? Would it be brought to light? What do you think about? It? <laughs> under the rug. Yes. Yes or no? <laughs> Not yet. Oh, yes. Two quick ones. Okay. I was in the service here in the States. It's a similar thing here. Let's say what's going on in Iraq, Afghanistan, and Vietnam. Similar situations are happening here that happen in Israel. The same thing, similar, I think. Yeah. But I can tell you what. 
Yes, there's a right. comment. Right? Yeah. What was in the suicide note? Uh, yeah. What was in the suicide <laughs> note? What do you think? <laughs> no, I was waiting. There are some questions about, yeah, of course, usually about the letter. I had a few ends, but I, I thought to leave it like this is better. Like, everybody can think what, what is written there. And you probably understand because she said it. And it was important that the, the general majors can see that nothing is, uh, you know, um, put him in, in some danger. He can leave it on and move on. And um, it's, it's okay that, that way, I think. But, you know, everybody can think what he, you know, coming his mind. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you again. Uh, thank you. Thank you.